Hello everyone, this is Saurabh from Edureka. Today's session is all about computer vision using OpenCV in Python. So I suggest you to go through the basics of Python. I will leave the link in the description box below. For now, let us move forward and have a look at the agenda for today. So guys, this is what we'll be discussing today. We'll begin by understanding what exactly is the meaning of computer vision and how a computer reads an image. Then I'll tell you what is OpenCV and how it works. After that, we'll see how to create an image detector as well as a motion detector using OpenCV. So I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Let us move forward and we will understand what exactly is the meaning of computer vision. So before I explain you anything guys, I believe all of you are on Facebook and the moment you upload any picture on Facebook, there's a feature called auto tag, right? So Facebook will give you suggestions to tag people who are there in the image, right? So how do you think that happens? That happens all because of computer vision. So computer vision is an interdisciplinary field that deals with how computers can be made to gain high level understanding from digital images or videos. So the idea is to automate tasks that the human visual systems can do. So a computer should be able to recognize that this is a face of a human being. This is what a lamppost looks like. This is basically a statue. So things like that, right? So I hope I'm clear what is the meaning of computer vision. And I don't think so I need to explain you what are the applications of computer vision, right? So uh, let's move forward guys and we're going to see how a computer reads an image. Now this is very interesting. So notice the image that is there in front of your screen, right? So a normal human can easily tell that there is a New York skyline in this image. But can computers really see this? Well, the answer is no. Computers see a matrix of numbers between 0 to 25, 0 to 255, right? So for a colored image, there will be firstly three channels, red, green, and blue. And there will be a matrix associated with each of these channels. Right? And each element of this matrix represents the intensity of brightness of that pixel. All of these channels will have their separate matrices and these will be stacked onto each other to create a three dimensional matrix. So a computer will interpret a colored image as a 3D matrix. I hope I'm clear. So when I say that the size of an image is 700 cross 700 and it is a colored image, that means there are 700 rows, 700 columns, and there are three channels because it's a colored image. Similarly, if I say 300 cross 700, that means there are 300 rows and 700 columns. And if it's a colored image, there'll be three channels. Now in the example, which is there in front of your screen, we have an image which has a size of B cross A. And since it is a colored image, there'll be three channels. One thing to note here, guys, for a grayscale or a black and white image, there's only one channel. So if it, there's a black and white image and I say that the size of the image is 700 cross 700, it means there are 700 rows and 700 columns in one single channel. Right? So I hope I'm clear for a black and white image. There's only one channel for a colored image There are three channels popularly called as RGB and each element of the matrix represents the intensity of the brightness of the pixel So this is how basically a computer reads an image It will read an image in the form of matrix It depends if it's a colored image then it will be a 3d matrix and if it is a grayscale or a black and white image Then it will be a 2d matrix Similarly, if I want to calculate the number of pixels, all I have to do is multiply the number of rows, number of columns, and the number of channels. So if I say that the size of the image is 700 cross 700 cross 3 because it's a colored image, then you can go ahead and multiply these numbers and you'll find the number of total pixels. So I hope you have understood this. Let us move forward and we are going to focus on what exactly is OpenCV. Now, first of all, OpenCV is a library which is used for computer vision. It was first developed in the year 1999 at Intel by Gary Bratsky and the first release came out in 2000. Let me tell you that OpenCV supports a wide variety of programming languages such as C++, Python, Java, etc. and also supports different platforms including Windows, Linux, etc. etc. Now OpenCV Python is nothing but a Python wrapper for the original OpenCV C++ implementation. And in OpenCV all the images are converted from or to NumPy arrays, right? So if there's any image, then OpenCV will first convert it into a NumPy array, right? And this makes it easier to integrate it with other libraries that uses NumPy, for example, SciPy and Matplotlib. So I hope you guys know about NumPy. If you aren't aware of this particular library, go ahead and check out a detailed tutorial on NumPy. I'll leave the link in the description box below. But for now, understand that all the images will be first converted to a NumPy array, right? So that's how OpenCV works. Since we saw that computer will first convert the image to a matrix, in this case, it will convert it into a NumPy matrix or a NumPy array, you can say. Now we'll directly jump into certain basics of OpenCV. So what I'll first teach you is how you can read an image, how you can perform basic operations, for example, resizing the image or displaying the image and things like that. So that, that's what I'm going to first focus on. So for that, what I'll do is I'll open my PyCharm and I'll execute the code there. But let me just first explain you what I'm going to show you. So first of all, I'm going to teach you how we can read a particular image. 
the first thing you need to do is obviously import the open cv module then we are going to read the image with the help of this i am read function so this one represents that it will be a colored image if it is a colored image and if we put zero here then it will convert it into a black and white or a grayscale image right and let me tell you that open cv will read it as a numpy array so basically python stores the images as numpy arrays or matrix of numbers so if it's a colored image it will be a 3d matrix and if it's a grayscale image it will be a 2d matrix so what i'll do i'll just quickly open my pycharm and i'll show you certain basic operations there itself so guys this is my pycharm so what i've done here is i've imported the cv2 module and what i'm doing here is i'm using this im read function and i've given the path to the image so you can see the name of my image is frank.jpg which is present in this particular path and one basically tells it to keep it as a colored image itself right so since i was telling you that all the images are converted to numpy array so it is a colored image it will convert it into a 3d matrix let us see if that happens or not so i'm just going to print this and uh, let me go ahead and execute it and you will obviously see a 3d array here right similarly if i go ahead and convert this to a grayscale image if just all i have to do is put zero here and we have a grayscale image here so let me just go ahead and run this and you will notice a 2d array notice the difference guys right and uh, if you want to see what kind of a matrix this is all you have to do is type in here type and it will show you the type which is a numpy n dimensional array all right so i've told you earlier as well that opencv will convert all the images to a numpy array now what if i want to know the size of my image for that all i have to do is use the shape function and you will know the size of the image since it's an umpire all i have to do is img dot shape and let us see what is the shape of our image so it is 600 cross 800 because we have converted this colored image to a grayscale image that means we have 600 rows 800 columns and one single channel because it's a black and white image now if i convert this to a colored image you will notice the difference in the shape and you can see that three is added here which basically means there are three channels rgb so there are 600 rows 800 columns and there are three channels so i hope you guys are clear how opencv reads an image uh, how to know the shape or size of the image how do we know that whether it's a colored image or a black and white image what is the difference what do you mean by rgb channel so i hope you guys are clear with that if you have any questions you can go ahead and mention that in the comment section we'll reply you asap so we saw how to read an image we saw how to print an image how to print an n-dimensional array then we also saw how to print the shape of the image and what will happen if we convert it into a colored image then we will saw that three was added in the end which basically means three channels right now what we are going to do is we are going to display the image how we are going to do that we are going to use this wait key function in which if we don't specify any parameter and we keep it as zero it means that the moment user presses a key the window will be closed and if we specify a time frame for example 2000 milliseconds then the window will wait for 2000 milliseconds and then it will be destroyed so this destroy all windows basically closes the windows based on my wait for key parameter so if it is zero the moment any person presses any key then all the windows will be destroyed and if i have given certain parameters like 2000 milliseconds then it will wait for 2000 milliseconds and it will automatically close the window so i hope uh, you have understood this let me just go ahead and uh, open my pie charm and i will show you there as well so guys this is a pie charm all i will do here is i basically want to print it or i want to display my image so i'll use this i am show function i have to give a name to this image so let it be a legend and we are going to type in here the name of the image here this is my file name and this is the image name right so i have given the path here if you can see now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the wait for key parameter so for that all i have to type here is cv2 dot wait key and uh, for now i'll just keep it zero which means that the user has to press any key to close the window right now what i'm going to do is destroy all windows function and let us go ahead and execute this and we will see the image and the moment i press any key it is gone similarly if i type in here 2000 milliseconds right so it'll appear for 2000 milliseconds and it'll automatically go away right so i hope you have understood how we can uh, you know display the image and how we can close the windows by using wait key and destroy all windows function so this is pretty easy guys i hope uh, you have no doubts here and still if you have any doubts again i'm telling mention it in the comment section i will reply you asap so now we saw how to basically read an image how to perform basic operations how to show the image how to close the windows and things like that now i'm going to tell you how we can resize 
a particular image so let me just go back and what i'll do is i'm going to resize this image and i'll go back to my pie charm again and uh, let me just create one more variable let it be resized which is equal to cv2 dot resize the name of my image and the shape that i want so probably i want 600 cross 600 right let me just go ahead and run this I want 600 cross 600 so instead of IMG I'll type in here resized and let us see what happens once I do this so you see that I have a resized image here right now obviously that is not symmetrical right so what can I do to make it symmetrical I can just go ahead and divide it by two or three the way I want to reduce the size so for now I'm just going to divide it by two and uh, let us see what happened so basically if you see the code here as well what I'm doing here I'm reducing it by two right so image shape divide by two and I'm converting it into an integer because even if it turns out to be a float value I will convert it into an integer so new image shape is equals to old image shape by two that's what I'm doing basically right so again I'm going to use the resize function for that I'll open my pie chart so all I have to do here is type in here int to convert it into an integer img dot shape function I'm going to use one divided by two and I'm going to close the parenthesis similarly here as well int open the parenthesis img dot shape zero divided by two and close the parenthesis and I think we are good to go so the size of the new image will become half of the old image uh, let us go ahead and run this so yes we can see that we have reduced the size let me just keep it as zero so that if I press any key then only the window will be closed now similarly I can increase the size as well so let me just go ahead and multiply it by two and increase the size so my new image will be twice the size of the old image let us see if that happens or not we'll run this and yep it's it's a pretty huge image let me just close it for now alrighty then fine so we have learned how to basically resize an image let me go back to my slides and we are going to focus on what we are going to discuss next so we saw how to resize the image next up we are going to see how we can detect a face in a particular image so it's pretty easy guys what you need is an image obviously you need to create a cascade classifier and it will contain the features of the face right so that your code can determine okay where is the face then we will what we'll use we'll use OpenCV that will read the image and the feature file and it will convert the image into numpy arrays so it will search for the row and column values of the face right so numpy and dimensional array the face coordinates and it will display the image with the rectangular face box let me repeat it again for you guys what we need for face detection we need an image then what we are going to do is we have a cascade classifier which contains the features of the face then we will use OpenCV that will read the images and the features so it will convert that image into a numpy array and it will search for the row and column values of the faces of the face numpy and dimensional array basically the face rectangle coordinates and then what we'll do is basically we'll uh, display the image with the rectangular face box right so what we are basically doing here is we are going to first read this cascade classifier uh, we'll give the path to it then what we are doing is we are reading the image that we are talking about we'll give the path to it as well we are converting it into a grayscale image cv2 dot color uh, bg2 bgr to gray is basically going to convert it into a black and white image or a grayscale image then what we are going to do is search for the coordinates of the image right so we have this gray image we are going to search for the coordinates with the help of detect multi-scale this is basically to figure out where is the face right let me just uh, drill it down a bit so this will create a cascade classifier object right and this is the path to the xml file which contains the face features then we are converting the colored image to the grayscale image after that what we are doing we are using a method to search for the face rectangle coordinates so this detect multi scale is basically a method which will help us to search for the face rectangle coordinates and scale factor basically decreases the shape value by five percent and until the face is found so smaller this value the greater is accuracy so scale factor is something i don't want you to focus too much right now this decreases the shape value by five percent until the face is found it keeps on decreasing it right the smaller this value the greater is your accuracy right and after that we are just printing the type and the face and how we are going to add the rectangular face box for that we are going to use a for loop and a method to create the face rectangle this is nothing but a method to create that rectangle this is our image object right and this is nothing but the rgb value of the rectangle outline so i'm going i have given it as a, some color you can give it whatever color that you want now this is the width of the rectangular face box 
and these are nothing but the coordinates x comma y then we have x plus width and y plus h so this is nothing plus x plus w plus comma y plus h right so i hope you guys are clear with it and uh, let me just quickly open my pycharm and i will execute the code there i've already written the code so let me just take you through it uh, it's very easy guys i have a cascade a classifier object here that i've created which will contain the face features then i'm reading the image which i want to create a rectangular face box around or detect the face uh, i'm converting it into a grayscale image then what i'm going to do is i'm going to determine the coordinates of the face for that i'm going to use this detect multi scale uh, method then i'm going to add a rectangular face box around it for that i'm going to use this for loop and this rectangle is nothing but a method to create that rectangular face box after that i'm resizing my image uh, and that's all i'm doing so what i can do is i can divide it by 2 so that it becomes easier for you to see but i don't think so i need to resize this image what i'll do is i'll just keep it the way it is and we're going to see that particular image itself i don't think so i need to resize it so i'll just type in here img and uh, we have our code ready that will determine that will detect the face in the image yep it successfully did that so i hope you guys have understood how we can detect faces in a particular image using open cv so guys this is nothing but the type right so we have a numpy n dimensional array so this is nothing but the coordinates of the face now if i go back to my slides you can see here these are nothing but the coordinates which i have displayed here right it's that easy guys now let me go back to my slides again and we are going to see how we can capture videos using open cv interesting right Let's see how to use OpenCV to capture video with computer webcam. Now, before I move forward, guys, let me just uh, tell you a few things. So, what we'll be doing, we'll be using OpenCV for reading frames or images one by one. So, what basically a video is? Video is nothing but multiple images or multiple frames which are displayed very quickly so that it looks like a video. So, what we'll be doing, we'll be using loops to build a window where images will appear really fast so that you can see it as a video. Something like this guy. He is basically smoking a cigarette. It is nothing but two images, but since I'm doing it pretty fast, you can see it as a video, like he is smoking. Although I don't want you guys to smoke. Now let us see how we can capture video using OpenCV. The first thing we need to do is import OpenCV. Obviously, then what we are going to do is create a video capture object, and this number basically tells the computer to use our built-in camera, right? If I want to use an external camera, for example, I have an external cam, and I can put one to use that. Similarly, if I have two external cameras and I want to use the third cam, I can put two here. Apart from that, even if I have a video file, I can give the path to that video file as well. Then this will basically release the camera in some milliseconds, right? So let me just quickly execute this, and you will see what happens there, right? I'll quickly open my PyCharm. Let me just go to the basics of py file, and I'll just type in here video equal to cv2 dot video capture. And I'm typing in here zero to use my built-in camera, and after that, I'm going to release this. So I'm just going to type in here video dot release. That's all I have to do. Go ahead and execute this. Run it again. Notice that the camera light will be on for split seconds. Again and again, execute it. It'll be on for split seconds, right? So let me go back to my slides, and I'll explain you there what I'm talking about. So basically, when you execute the code, you will notice that your cam light switch is on for a split seconds, and then it turns off. So what we need to do is we need to add a time delay, and for that, what we need is a time module, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in here time dot sleep three, which will stop the script for three seconds. For three seconds, your camera will be on, right? So when you execute the code, the webcam will be on for three seconds. Let us see if that happens or not. I'm going to execute this now. So for that, I'll open my PyCharm again. So this is my PyCharm again, guys. I need to first add time module here, and uh, now I'll add that time delay. Time dot sleep for three seconds. Keep my webcam on, and here we go. So we have successfully added the time delay. It was that easy, guys. Now let's add a window that shows the video. Till now we didn't see the video. We didn't see what's happening, right? So how can I add that window? So it's very very easy, guys. I hope you guys know this. This is basically a video capture object. Now this check is a bool data type that returns true if Python is able to read the video capture object. This is just basically a true and false kind of a variable that will return true if Python is able to read the video capture object. Otherwise, it will return false. Frame is a NumPy array. It represents the first image that video captures, right? Since we saw that video is nothing but multiple images which appears really fast and it looks like a video, 
right so the first image or the first frame is basically what we will store in this particular frame the numpy array of that particular image so it is a numpy array it represents the first image that video captures we are going to print both check and frame and we are going to add a time delay as well so let us just quickly open uh, the pycharm and we are going to execute this code there let me just open it for now what we are doing here is uh, check comma frame equal to video dot read let me just print check and i will also print frame and let us go ahead and execute this we'll see what happens all right so what happened here python was able to read the video capture object that's why we have got the output as true basically our check has returned true because python was able to read that particular uh, video capture object apart from that this is nothing but the numpy array for my frame right which is pretty visible i don't think so i need to explain you why it is a numpy array why it is three dimensional i think we have discussed quite a lot about numpy arrays in the previous slide so for now i think you have understood this what check and frame is check is basically a bool data type it will return true if python is able to read the video capture object and frame is nothing but the n dimensional array so guys now we'll see how we can actually create a window right so what we need to do is we need to create a frame object which will read the images of the video capture object and we will recessively show each frame of the video being captured so all i'm doing here is using this i am show function again right and i'm going to give a name to it and i'm going to show all the frames which are going to come till i close the window all right so it's pretty easy guys uh, for three seconds uh, you're going to see a video being displayed on a window and for that i'm just quickly going to open my pie charm and i just need to add this im show function there and let us go ahead and do that cv2 dot im show i'm gonna give a name say let us call it as capture i'm gonna type in here frame now uh we need to use this wait for key function wait key uh let us keep it as zero so that whenever i press any button it'll close the window and uh, finally i'm gonna type in here cv2 destroy all windows so now let us go ahead and execute it so we'll see a window that will capture our first frame and let us see if that happens or not here we go so yes the moment i press any key the window will disappear all right so this is how we can display the video on the window right uh, let me just go back now how to capture the video instead of the first frame right for till now what we did we just captured the first frame that appeared in front of the camera right because that is basically what video is basically what it is nothing but multiple frames which appear really quickly and that comes out as a video so what we need is now we need to capture the entire video so for that what we'll do we'll use a loop because i've told you earlier as well that is what we are going to use uh, in order to capture the video we will be using a while loop right and the condition will be such that unless check is true python will display the frame because what is check check will basically return true if python is able to read the video capture object and if it is not able to read it then it becomes false so our condition will be such that if check is equals to true then python will display the frames right it will display the frame on a window so let me just take you through the code that i have written here video is equals to cv2 dot video capture equal to zero which is basically a video capture object i'm not going to repeat that i have a variable a which is equal to one while true a uh, while python is able to read the video capture object it'll enter the loop a is equal to a plus one which will keep on increasing check comma frame so it'll print the frame basically the numpy array object and what i'm doing here is converting the frame the image into a grayscale image then i'm going to show that grayscale image and i have given it a time frame that is one millisecond so it will be the this will generate a new frame after every one millisecond so this will basically generate a new frame after every one millisecond right so it is nothing but a wait key and after every millisecond the frame will change all right guys and the moment i press q this break statement will come out of the loop and the window will close right print a this will print the number of frames that we have captured right and uh, video dot release you know destroy all windows you know right so let me just take you through the code again we are importing cv2 and time module then what we are doing we are creating a video capture object after that we have a variable a equal to 1 which is nothing but it will tell us the number of frames that we have captured while true which means that while python is able to read the video capture object increase the a value by 1 then you know these two statements we are printing nothing but the frame the n dimensional array object then we are converting that frame to a grayscale image then we are showing it and after that we are generating a new frame after every one millisecond that's what it is doing here 
then once we press Q we are out of the loop and console will print the number of frames and all those things right so let me just quickly open my PyCharm and I will execute it there all right so for that let me just remove these things for now right so after this I have a video capture object that you can see below this I have a variable a equal to one now I'm going to use while loop while true enter the loop a equals a plus one now I'm over here I'm just going to print the frame and now I'm going to convert this to a grayscale image gray is equals to cv2 dot cvt color frame comma now I'm going to type in here cv2 dot bgr underscore cv2 dot color underscore b g r to gray all right next up we are going to use this im show function uh let me just show you what i'm going to do here i'll just type in here cv2 dot im show uh let it be capture again and i'm going to show you the grayscale image and then finally i want a new frame after every one millisecond for that i'll type in here cv2 dot wait for wait key and after every one millisecond and over here i'm just going to use a conditional statement which says that if key is equal to equal to ord q and then a colon break the loop right and now i'm going to type in here print a which is basically the number of frames now video dot release and then finally cv2 dot destroy all windows right so i hope you guys have understood the code i'll just quickly take you through it import couple of modules cv2 and time then we are creating a video capture object we are defining a variable a equals to one and while the condition is true that is my python is able to read the video capture object we are going to create two variables check and frame where check is a bool uh, type variable frame is nothing but an n dimensional array which will read the video right after that we are printing it printing the n dimensional object converting it into a grayscale image we are showing it we are also mentioning that after every one millisecond the new frame should appear and then once a user press q then the window will disappear and the control will come out of the loop right and then we are printing this number of frames video dot release we know we know what is destroy all windows so let us see what will happen once we execute this and here we go oops uh, so there is an error so all i have to do is uh, define this variable key and here we go so let me go ahead and execute this so yep you can see the frame that is behind me and uh, you can see my hand as well so let me just quickly press q and you'll see that window will disappear all right so i hope guys you have understood that how we can actually uh, you know capture the video and how we can display it on the window and then things like that so i hope it was clear to you all guys so let me go back to my slides again and now we're going to talk about a motion detector right so this is our use case guys and i know all of you must be waiting for it right so let me just take you through the problem statement why we are executing this use case right everything exists for a reason so let us understand what are the problems that this motion detector will help us to solve so you have been approached by an organization that is studying human behavior now your task is to give them a camera that can detect any motion in front of it and it should return a graph which should contain for how long the object or the human was in front of the camera so this is how the graph should look like this should be the starting time right the moment object appeared in front of the camera for how long it stayed in front of the camera then it went off then again it appeared at this particular time then again it went off so this is how it should look time at which object appears in front of the camera and the time at which the object moves away from the camera so how we are going to execute it so this is the flow diagram for that guys and first of all we need to save the initial frame so what will happen since i've told you earlier as well video is nothing but fast moving images all right so what we'll do the moment we switch on the camera the first frame the first image that will appear we will save it right then we'll convert that image to a gaussian blur image you don't uh, need to worry about it i'll explain you what is gaussian blur image then we'll take the frames with the object and convert it into gaussian blur image so basically this is done to give us the accurate results right so gaussian blur image is something like that you don't have to go into too much detail here to execute it but just understand it just to increase the efficiency we are converting our images to gaussian blur so we are converting our first image also to gaussian blur and the subsequent frames as well that will appear will also be converted to gaussian blur image 
Then what we'll do, we'll calculate the difference. The difference between the first frame and the frames that will appear after the first frame. Since the first frame is stored already, we are going to subtract that with the frames that will appear after that. Right? Then what we need is, now because of this, we'll know, okay, there's a change in the frame. The initial image looked like this, but now since there's some movement or some motion, we can see that there's a difference in the subsequent frames, right? So we know that there is some motion or there is some object, but that object might be too small that we don't want to capture that. For that, what we do, we define a threshold that will remove the shadows and then two small objects or other noises. So basically we will define a threshold or the size of the pixel that should appear as an and will be considered as an object. Right. I don't want a flying house fly to be considered as an object there. Just an example. Now define the borders of the object, right? So we need to give a border or a box there, right? And basically a rectangular box around the object. And then we are going to calculate the time when object appears and exits the frame. I hope you guys are clear. Again, guys, I'm repeating the logic. What happens? You first save the initial image in a frame. What happens the moment you switch on the camera? The first image that will appear, that will be saved. That will be converted to a Gaussian blur image. Similarly, whatever frames that appear after that initial image will also be converted to Gaussian blur image. Now the difference between the first frame and the subsequent frames will be calculated. Now that difference will tell us whether there is an object in front of the camera or not, because if there's a change from first frame, then there is definitely some object, but that object might be too small and I might not want it. For that, we will define a threshold. All right, so this should be the size of the object in order to consider it as an object or an emotion in front of the camera. Then we are going to define the borders around that object. We'll add a rectangular box. And then finally, we are going to calculate the time when object appears and exits the frame, right? We'll save that in a data frame. And after that, we are going to visualize the data frame. That's it. We are going to create a Pandas data frame for that. Now, the question is how I'm going to execute it, right? So guys, this is pretty much from what we did last time as well. So what we have here is we are going to create a video capture object. Then we are converting uh, the frame color to grayscale. Then we are converting the grayscale image to Gaussian blur image. And this if statement will basically store my first frame or my first image. The moment I switch on the camera, whatever image comes first, it will be stored in this particular first frame variable, right? So the statement says that if first frame is none, when there is nothing in the first frame, it will enter the loop. The first image that will appear will be stored in the first frame. And after that continue means it will come out of the loop, right? Let's see what we are going to do next. After that, what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the difference since I've told you earlier as well. We are going to calculate the difference between a first frame and the subsequent frames which I have stored in gray, right? So this will calculate the difference. After that, I have defined a threshold. Now it provides a threshold value such that it will convert the difference value with less than 30 to black. If the difference is greater than 30, it will convert those pixels to white. So basically whatever object is there in front of the screen, it will convert that to white, right? Whatever the difference is. So that's why I've given the color as well. And this is basically uh, the difference value that I've defined a threshold here. Similarly, I've defined one more threshold, right? You can see it over here as well. Thresh Delta that I'm using here. After that, what I'm doing is I'm defining the contours or you can say the borders. So basically the borders around that object which appears. Now I'm adding one more threshold guys. This will remove noises and shadows or even a house fly which I don't want to detect, right? So basically it will keep only that part white which has area greater than 1000 pixels. So if my object has area great smaller than 1000 pixels, it won't be detected because I don't want to detect it, right? So you can change it the way you want. You can keep it 5000, you can keep it 10,000, you can keep it 200. That totally depends on you. Right. And this is basically to create a rectangular box around the object in the frame. So I hope you guys are clear with it. And finally, we are just displaying all the things. And uh, yeah, you can see it over here as well. And you know what it is. Basically, frame will change after every one millisecond. This will basically close the window and this will close all the windows. Now, what we need to do is we need to calculate the time for which the object was in front of the camera. For that, we will create a pandas data frame. Right, so pandas dot data frame is what we are going to use here. There it will have two columns, start and end, basically when object appears in front of the camera and when it went off. And we are going to tweak a couple of things. We are going to define this variable called status. Status at the beginning of the recording is zero, and as the object is not visible, right? So if there is no movement, then it will be zero because there is no object that is there in front of the screen, right? But it will change the status when the object is being detected. The status will become one, right? Similarly. We were going to append the status list of status for every frame for every frame. We are going to append it. So this basically tells us the second last status list value. All right. 
these two conditional statement will basically record date time in a list when change occurs. Let me tell you how. So if my status underscore list, the last value of this list is actually equal to equal to one, which means there is an object. But my second last value says that there was no object before in the previous frame. That means there is an object which has appeared, right? So that basically the time and which the object has appeared will be stored here again, which will be stored here. After that, if you notice the second conditional statement, which says that my last frame does not have anything. Uh, I mean, there's no object in front of it in front of the camera, but in my second last frame, there was an object that means the object went off, right? So it will note that time as well when the object was not there in front of the screen. That simple guys. So this will basically create a pandas data frame that will have two columns start and end, which will tell us when the object appeared in front of the camera and when the object went off from the camera. Right, so this is how it is and uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to create a uh, use this for loop in which we are storing the time values in a data frame, right? I think you guys are aware of pandas. If you aren't aware of pandas, I'll leave a link in the description box below, which is nothing but a detailed tutorial about pandas and data analysis using it. So go through it. If you are not aware of pandas, it's very important library. I think every Pythonist should know about it and then we are going to store it in a times.csv file. So it will be a CSV file. Right, so time i n time is equals to i plus one. Ignore index. So they basically we don't have any index values here, right? We don't want to display the index, so there is no index value here. This for loop is pretty self-explanatory. So let me just go ahead and execute this first, and then I'll tell you how we have visualized it. So here is our motion detector, guys. I've explained to you the code in detail. And if you want the code, you can go ahead and you know mention your email ID and we will reply you back. We'll basically provide you with the code. So if you're looking to execute it on your own, go ahead and uh, mention that, right? So what I'll do is I'll first, you know, won't come in front of the camera. I'll go away because it has to first capture the first frame. Then only it can identify the difference between the subsequent frames, right? So guys, I'll execute it now and what will happen? It will first capture the first image, which is there in front of the camera and any movement that will happen. It will capture that, right? So the first frame will be stored. Then the difference between the first frame and the subsequent frame will be calculated in order to determine if there is a object in front of the camera or not. Let me go ahead and execute this. So guys, you see a plain background. There's nothing right. So this will be saved the first frame and then let us see uh, what will happen if I bring in my hand. So it, it, there's a rectangular box around my hand. You can see right. So it is basically uh, capturing the motion around the camera and all of these things are saved in my pandas zeta frame, right? So you can notice my hand is coming and then it is going off. So all of the, uh, the time at which the hand appears in front of the camera and the time at which it went off will be stored in my pandas data frame because I have two columns start and end, right? So if I just minimize this, let me show you the Gaussian blur image as well. Right, so yeah, uh, in that Gaussian blur image, I have defined that, uh, you know, to keep the object uh, white if it is greater than 1000 pixels, right? So this is what comes up, right? Yes, this is Gaussian blur image. This is, this is Gaussian blur, yeah. And uh, this is a gray frame, which you can see over here. Let me press Q. It'll close all the windows. Now let me show you this times.csv file. So, yep, this is how it looks. Now let me go back to my slides again. Now basically what we are doing is we are going to plot it on the browser using the bouquet library. Now guys, to explain bouquet, it'll take a lot of time, right? I've just written the code here to show you how the graph will look like. I'll be coming up with a separate tutorial on bouquet if you guys want. So if you really want a tutorial on bouquet, which is nothing but a library that helps us to visualize the data on the browser, you can go ahead and mention that in the comment section that we want a tutorial on bouquet as well, right? For now, I'll just go and uh, open my PyCharm and I'll execute the code there. So this is my code that will help us to visualize the graph, right? So it is basically using the motion detector, which I have here, right? From this file, it will take DF, the data frame, which we have created. So let me just go ahead and run this. Right, so again, uh, I'm just going to put my hand a couple of times and going to put my other hand as well. Yes. So, yes, I think it's a good enough size of the data frame and it should appear in the browser. The moment I press Q, you'll see that there'll be a graph that will appear on our screen. And here we go, guys. So, this is the graph that I was talking about. End time, start time. So, let me just increase the size for you guys so yeah this is how the graph will look like start time end time so we have everything here so guys so i hope you have understood this and it was an interesting session for you and uh, mention what do you feel about this particular tutorial in the comment section 
along with whatever doubts you have and if you're looking for the code the entire code you can mention your email id as well and if you want a separate tutorial on bouquet let us know in the comment section so guys that's it for today's session i hope you have enjoyed it thank you and have a great day i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning